Hello, my name is Jordan Robinson, and I chose to research Betsy Ross for this project. I looked at three different articles I found. The first one by William Miller dates back to 1946. In it, he answers two questions. Did Betsy Ross make flags? And he said that there is evidence that Elizabeth Ross was to receive money for making ship's colors. Whether the colors were the stars and stripes, he says, was a moot question. Could it be proven that, there were, that they were the national colors? The question of Betsy Ross making the first stars and stripes would still remain in doubt. For this one bit of evidence is dated from 1777, almost a year after the flag is supposed to have been made by Ross. And then the question, did Betsy Ross partially design and make the first stars and stripes? 94 years after the date her descendants claimed she made the flag, the 34 years after the death of the so-called maker of the flag, grandson William Canby was signed statements of Betsy's granddaughter, niece, and a daughter of Betsy claimed that Betsy Ross said she made the first stars and stripes. Today, although subsequent family spokesmen have with subtlety refined the story, and although many accept the story as being true, the skeptic still remains to be convinced. So that's dating back from 1946. And then I found another by Harvard McLean from 1979. And he discusses historical myths and their place in national histories. He said, Simple historical myths are no longer found in most textbooks or as part of official school curricula. They are still passed on orally in the classroom and in print and non-print media students use. Unfortunately, some teachers seem unaware that they often te what they often teach as truth is merely fantasy. And he answers the notion that says Betsy Ross made the first American flag. And in response to that, he said, There is no historical evidence that Betsy Ross, responding to a personal appeal by Washington, sat down and turned out the first American flag. Even the American Legion dismiss, dismisses this tale as pure fiction. And he concluded by saying that students should learn history taught in an honest manner, by an open and ethical teacher. Taught simply as a story, the legend of Betsy Ross in our first flag is not dangerous and can do nothing but enhance a student's feelings toward his heritage. Taught as fact, it may be the first step in developing negative attitudes toward many of the principles it is intended to symbolize. There is so much that is positive and memorable in our past that we should never have to depend on historical myths to be proud of a history that never happened. And then I found a more recent article from John B. Harker, who claims to be a fifth-generation descendant of Betsy Ross, and he examined her role extensively. And this is the conclusion that he came to. Indirect evidence has surfaced in the last 100 years which supports the Betsy Ross family traditions that Betsy influenced or initiated the use of five-pointed stars on the national flag, that she sewed prototypes and actual flags for the Pennsylvania Navy and for the U.S. government, and that her role was appreciated in Philadelphia and national folklore for generations before her grandson's speech in 1870. While there is no documentary evidence as to who designed and sewed the first national flag, she was in the center of it all during the revolution and has made a defensible place in our nation's history. Which that's the sense I take, that she is a valuable part of America's history. We can't know for certain um, to the extent she had in that particular flag, though. Which follows along with what uh, Laurel Thatcher Ulrich claimed in her article, How Betsy Ross Became Famous, which deals with the same issues of how much and uh, how much Betsy herself attribute, contributed to the making of the first flag versus the um, the other flag which is held in the Smithsonian today. Thank you.